In this video, we're going to pair the Deepcool AK620 to the Noctua U12A using this test bench right here. The information in this video can also be found on my website at pcanalytics.com and the product links can be found in the description below. With that in mind, let's start by looking at some qualitative metrics. Both CPU cooler images show the side of the cooler that would face the RAM. With that in mind, the AK620 cooler will overhang the RAM slots in most setups, while the U12A will not have RAM clearance issues in most setups. Additionally, both coolers use two 120mm fans, and it is possible to add an additional fan to the AK620 cooler. In regards to installation, both coolers are relatively easy to install. Next, let's dig into the performance. We're going to cover two sets of graphs, one normalized by percent speeds and the second normalized by noise levels. Note that these graphs are created by using machine learning models to help break down the performance using over a million data points in an open case. This means that performance may differ depending on your case's airflow and your CPU. To orient you to the graph, the left side shows temperatures corresponding to the solid lines, with the right side showing noise levels represented by the dashed lines. As a general rule, lower is always better for the data shown. With that in mind, we will first look at the fan's performance on an idle CPU, which is assumed to be using 30 watts of power. When comparing the AK620 cooler in red to the U12A cooler in blue, the AK620 has slightly better cooling performance across the board. However, the AK620 begins to start to make audible noise around 50% fan speed. As we increase the watts to 105, which is what the CPU is rated for, we can see that the performance between the coolers is very similar. However, the U12A is noticeably quieter across the board. Next, we will look at the CPU overclocked to 125 watts. This shows that both coolers can handle overclocked temperatures well, with the AK620 cooler being slightly cooler. For the second set of comparisons, we will look at the performance for a given noise level. The graph shown has noise on the bottom axis, while keeping the temperatures on the side axis. Note that lower is still better for this graph. When comparing the coolers by normalized noise levels, we see that both coolers perform similarly across the board, with the AK620 cooler being slightly better. As we increase the watts to 105, we can see that this relationship holds. And as we increase the wattage to 125, we can see that this trend continues. Overall, the AK620 cooler has slightly better cooling performance for a given noise level, making it the winner for this comparison. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out this one. Thank you for watching.